Hey everybody, Day the Rockstar here, and this is a update, not a midweek update, going into Friday. I'm going to send it out Thursday evening, doing a little uh, something different here on Day Trading Radio today. Um, Paul is covering, I'm working on the trading bot, uh, and then I'm starting this video now. Now I'm starting to do some research for the HPS watch list. I will be on the air tomorrow, will be on the air tomorrow on Friday, so we're switching it up. Normally I'm off on Friday, but I'll be broadcasting Friday, so... If you're out there, come on by. And we're also, this week was an open house, and we're, um, you still have time to actually get into that and sign up for that. You just have to go to the site. Or actually, um, better yet, email rpm at daytradingradio.com, rpm at daytradingradio.com. Mention to him that you'd like to get a open house uh, pass. Give him a username in your email that you would like to use and he'll set you up and then send an email and you'll have access to the whole whole system everything that we do here at day trading radio every single day of the year for the last 14 years or to, to that i don't know where we're up to now anyway um so the first thing i want to do is get us ready for well let's just review it's been a busy week with all the news and markets bouncing nice we just came off of a, uh, oh, actually, I see something moving right now. Uh, let's talk about this one stock, if I don't talk about it now. It's starting to move. Something, to, I've been watching some of the cheap ones. Typically, I'm not in the penny stocks. I have a few that I pay attention to. But they, the truth is, they have been running. And, you know, when the momentum crowd gets onto these things, they are blasting off. And there's crazy, crazy uh, moves in them. So let's actually go over a few of these. And the one w, uh, VVPR is actually starting to move right now. Um, these are the stocks that look awful, but they get manipulated. There's no doubt about it. They get manipulated. They get a pop, and then they do a deal, raise money, and it drops back. So you have to really just uh, see the ones that have... Um, volume in it, the low flow, just kind of a criteria you want to have to to identify these. And I have a scanner that I use. And some of these are very low, light volume, but some of them have, um, you know, they get the pops. It's very hard to find and be in one before it pops. It really is. I mean, you have to try to get it while it getting good and then uh, ride it fast and then get out. But I've been watching this one for the last couple of days. I'm just going through some other ones right now. Just fast to see what's moving out there. Yeah, this I wrote down this one, Age, which looked interesting. Looks like a, a recent, uh, I don't know if it's a recent, it doesn't look like it's been traded in here other than recently. Started at $1.50, now it's four seventy five, And uh, pushing back up. Here's one that's... Uh, Raphael Holdings. Uh, some of these I'm not that. This one's all all time high. But look at where these things came from and, and ran. This is not a good example of one of those penny pumping stocks. But you you'll see them out there, especially the ones that gotten crushed. Um, they tend to get a bounce every so often. So um, the one I'm looking at right now is this VVPR. VVPR. And again, maybe possible bounce coming coming your way on this one. It's already up from sixty cents to ninety cents over the last few days and it's starting to run. Just throwing it out there. I wanna put it out there. I know there's all kinds of traders out there. We trade here at Daytrain Radio more quality names. Um, just to review the 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 uh, trades from for this week. We started off early in the week on the UCO at uh, 1495 I'm going to break down all these charts for you and show you why we get into it. Well, you know, natural natural gas and oil, oil and gas have been crushed recently. So, we got in <clears throat> I mean, there wasn't cri criteria that I tend tend to get in, you know, divergences and stuff. But this was, you know, I started getting into the Schlumberger SLB and then um some reminded me of the UC the UCO, which was the triple leverage ETF for oil. And I said, well, all right, that's a probably a good, you know, if I'm looking for a bounce here in Schlumberger, we're probably going to get a bounce across the whole sector. And we did. I'm still actually holding the uh, Schlumberger. I have options on that. And it's just a slow grind up. I expect a little further move. We're out of the uh, UCO, but just look at the percentages you can get on that. 
I mean, basically this one, I was in, <clears throat> I sold it, let's just see, it looks like I was in, I sold it at fourteen ninety five up a dollar ten. So I was in at thirteen eighty five. Thirteen eighty five. Uh as it started moving up. I like these two candles. Now it's at seventeen and change. All right. So and then of course we're trading the LABU, another the triple triple leverage ETF that's a biotech ETF. And you know, again, it seemed very cheap down here in that thirty dollar level. Now it's at forty seven. Still holding some options on this, and I expect maybe a pop tomorrow to sell sell everything out on this one. Um, but we've been in and out of that. I've been in the January uh, options. Picked them up at, what did I get them at here? I don't know where I even have them. I have, to, I have so many. We're in and out of them so much, so just going to say that we're, in them now, going into tomorrow, I'll tell you the ones I'm in now. LABU, I'm in the January 18, 45 calls at 3.31. So I'm up a little on them and uh, looking for a pop tomorrow on those. Now, it's not always options, but options are sometimes a great way of tr trading if you're short term and you like to get the, the swinging momentum moves. It's much easier to you know, pick up uh, LABU instead of picking up couple hundred shares for ten thousand dollars you're picking up a you know a couple contracts or a few contracts for a fraction of the amount and you're you're getting great returns on these so if you want to learn more about that again we uh we do a lot of that here at day trading radio uh so i got the slumberger like i said i sold my service now which was our best bet from the last two weeks two best bets we had the service now and the and the coop and both of these continue to look very very good service now has great earnings i'm probably going to get back into this one and it'll probably be on the watch list going into next week actually writing it down right now <clears throat> remember this had good earnings it had good guidance it just got stuck in a bad market but overall it's very close to recent highs it's consolidating right into our area of resistance at 190 area and we're just going to get through that and then probably make a run to the highs, $200 right above us. So I don't want to be out of this too much. It's, pull, it's trading at 189 right now. I'm going to be watching it closer tomorrow. I might take that entry back in on this one. The, the one thing I pay attention to also is the stochastic rotation here. And the rotation is kind of pushed up here. So we're seeing this in a lot of different stocks, even though this is very strong. Um, it's holding good strength. It's embedded. We are extended here, and as we, you know, if we, I always say, go back to every time you were kind of extended. The majority of times, as you pulled back, but this little, might be a little bit different. We might actually push higher. And I'm gonna, you know, you know, we also have the potential news. Actually, I might want to get in this now. Hold on a second. All right, I held off of it. I'm not in it yet, but there is a nice three-day consolidation. Market actually is closing on the highs. It's just a few minutes left, 15 minutes left in the day. And we're at the highs right now. Um, service now definitely looks good. I'm just not a big fan of breakout plays these days. I'm more of waiting for my setup to come in and then pick it up. So even though I like this moving higher, I'm going to just uh, see if we get a little rotation. Maybe take advantage of uh, maybe so it doesn't look like it wants to pull back. I'm looking at the chart right now. I don't know how that's going to play out tomorrow. Probably even gap up tomorrow. But that is a good one. And then the other one is Coop. And um, same thing with that. Well, actually, let's go back through our research. We'll get to Coop when we get to the, the trade on that. All right, so service now. Um, I sold my GTXI, which was a kind of a, a penny stock from a few days ago. And we had this nice little run. I got 20 cents out of it at 1,000 shares. So um, sold it at 105. Then we had the Tilray. Tilray was a great trade. Uh, the cannabis um, TLRY started moving again. And um, we got this pop. We traded that pop. So I was just scalping that one. We got $2 and change on that. And the LABU got back in then and sold the uh, Tilray again. Then we bought Match.com, MTCH. And in that currently, and this is... Uh, Again, the dating site, they own all the dating, Tinder, plenty of fish, 
Bumble, um, you know, eHarmony, all these uh, dating uh, sites get together. They actually own a lot of those. So you can see there's a downward trend line coming into play. A little bit above us, I like to see that uh, get tagged. I'm not looking at this as a large head and shoulders pattern. You know, we don't we're not traders on a pattern that goes out for the whole year. It's just not uh, not what I'm doing. But again, you have to realize it is it kind of extended. So if the market decides to rotate back down here, this could have a little pressure on it. But I am long this one, looking for a pop. I'd like to see this pop tomorrow. You know, I'd like to see this. Going into tomorrow, um, and just get out a lot, a lot of these uh, these stocks, these options. All right, so that one, and then um, here's one that I'm not a big fan. I saw some action in it the other day, WDC. It's slowly moving up. Uh, you know, I, it's not bad. I like the area down here, <clears throat> so I'm in that February 40 calls. The 342. And then we sold the Alpha. Alpha was a great one. A deep throat uh, pick. And uh, got in on this one. Alpha. What was this one? So five and five and 60 cents. We got in at 601. And uh, sold it right here at 661, actually. So from yesterday. Still trading at that same price. So 60 cents. 500 shares. Um, CGC. That was, uh, I had common shares in that. CGC, Cannabis uh, Growth Corporation. And we had a nice pop, and it pushed us back into positive territory where I was long at 34. And we took it off today at 30, just under, uh, just under 37. Yeah, just under 37. It's at 37.54. It continued to move higher. Now look at this perfect wedge pattern breakout. There's a couple of good wedge pattern setups that we like, but again, typical trades. And then uh, today, the last uh, J.P. Morgan uh, added to J.P. Morgan on calls here. I like that it's holding around a hundred dollars. Uh, we have a slight pullback that might register on a couple different time frames. So a 60 minute looks pretty good. And again, we're pinned under the 200. We're trying to bust through. I just like that we're we're back. Ab you look at this downward channel. We pushed down. We held it. So it really confirmed this this channel line right here. Really confirmed that. And we broke down through it. Now we got back above it. So now that we're back above it, I want to look for this to hold. That's why I wanted to go long here. I want this 100 level to hold. Uh, I'm going to call this a little flag that's playing out. And we're going to you know, try to get a pop up to... You know where we could go with this our, our next area of resistance is just above us at 103 103 is our next area of resistance a recent breakdown it's a 50 period moving average and then above that there's some 105 but we'll worry about that trade to 103 for now so that those are some of the trades or all the trades recent trades for this week um, still have a lot on the t board, longs, no shorts yet. I have the NXPI, I have the LUV. LUV, um, for those out there from last week or this past HPS watch list, LUV was our divergence play of the week, and it continues to show great strength. Even the airlines actually kind of gapped down. They all reversed today, and they came back strong. I saw people in the room mention Delta Airlines. Uh, all of them. That just shows you the strength and the and how everyone has come back strong from the gap down. So holding LUV and they're looking good. I have options and and 100 shares at 47.55 uh, up about 140 dollars on that IBM here. Looking pretty good too. All right, so that's good. We're doing pretty good. Um, so purpose of this you know again i'm not going to be i'm going to be broadcasting tomorrow so i'm not going to be doing the watch list so i'm going to try to get us some research out tonight for those setups going into next week and then i'll follow up tomorrow if we find any more all right so that's where we're going to we're going to pick up here looking at some setups going into next week 
Let's start off by saying this move in the airlines looks really good. The reversal today looks really, really good. Telling me that the, the airlines want to go higher. And again, the ETF here, which um, you could just get a good view, overall view, came back really strong. Even though we had the divergence, we had a nice move on this. But the, the candle is really good. A break above you know, uh, yesterday's high is going to be very bullish on this. And it just it, it looks good. It just looks good for a follow through. So still very bullish. I think these are, are going to go higher. Can to continue with that? All right. Well, let's finish up this video because I wanted to get it out before Friday. Uh, don't forget, I'll be on the air tomorrow. But I have. I was just doing my research now, and I have a kind of a fast uh, list of stocks that I am looking at to get into or trade. Um, let's just go through these pretty fast. Give uh, thanks, Danu. I got a couple ideas from Danu. He sent me some of his research, some of strong stocks. Uh, the EXC here, Exelon Corporation. Actually, I see a bot trade is actually active right now. Let me just take a fast look at that. So you can see the bot is active right now. Um, I have two good strategies. I, I hate to tell you that, well, I'm sorry to tell you that I haven't finished the short strategy yet, but I have two long strategies there that are very um, very close to being complete. I just have to work on some trailing stops and to get the, uh, but they're very, uh, very good, high probability, um, I guess, automated uh, setups here. And uh, one just um, activated. I just, I'm actually running one overnight. The other one is, it's not as, um, doesn't work as great in the lower volatility overnight, you know, liquidity. And the ranges are not there, so I've, I'm only running one, but it's a good one, and it should give you some good opportunities overnight if you want to tune in and watch that. All right, so let me uh, go back here to this chart, um, and let's start. All right, so the EXC, you know, very strong st a stock. Nothing wrong with this. It's actually in a very bullish phase right now. It's popped. It should return back to the highs. If you're having a hard time trading the volatility, sometimes it's just good to be in a um, some good quality names. There's so many different ways we um, attempt to trade this market. Some of the swing trades, some of the option trades, some of the fast day trades. All right, this would be more of a swing trade set up on this one right now. Um, next one here is Corning GLW. Always liked. Uh, uh, following this one, trade it every so often. This has a nice top trend line, and we could probably drag the uh, parallel trend down here very close to. And remember, our rule is if you have a snap down based on news and a reverse and it leaves a big candle, we don't we don't use that candle as the lower of the channel. Target filled. Oh, there's our target got filled here on the uh, target got filled on the. here with the desktop audio all right so this is um again corning and again i traded this one out of this uh, nice little channel down here let's move back up there's many times we've been in this and this looks pretty good down here corning uh, although it just came down the retest of the lower trend line is always great now it's past the retest you know, there's no longer that retest, but I always watch for that bounce and a little pullback and a retest and off to the races. Now, I'm going to show you a stock that hasn't bounced or given us that. Re Most of these are just bouncing off of the lower trend lines and, and taking off. But there is a few. I think I could probably dig them out. I don't know if this is it or not. Again, here's another good example of that lower trend line bounce and then a retest of that bounce and then takes takes off. Another good downward channel. And again, these are swing trade um possibilities on these not to say I want to be in all these but I want to give you some good um, good ideas here gold has been very strong and this is actually a very nice flag it's a very strong flag I, I would expect this to break out on the gold flag just a, a textbook type of flag holding above the 20 period moving average everything looks good on that I don't really trade gold so I'm gonna pass on it but this data is the one that I'm, I'm looking at. Um, a pullback to the 20-period moving average after a nice pop. Very close to the highs. 
always a great stock to watch and to uh, see you know recent highs now look where this is look where the 200 period moving average and look where the market is everything um, is just very bullish on this so this little pullback this little flag back to the 20 looks good I don't you know I would actually put a probably put a stop in here at 116 but if it does have any uh, any action tomorrow we're gonna watch this I'm gonna watch this the first hour of trade so between 930 and 1030 if we come into 1030 we're gonna see where the stock is I'm writing the notes down right now if we're trading near the highs and continue to, to look strong compared to the market I think this might be a good if not a good scalp, a good two-day, three-day hold going into next week um, for a pushback up to the all-time highs. All right, so the data is one that I have circled for tomorrow. <clears throat> Waste management is another great one. And even though we're very close to the highs, you know, I, I tend to, you know, hate chasing these. I would love getting into them down here, but I hate chasing them. But again, another quality swing, possible swing trade. So going into this week or last week, we talked about the airlines were set up, and they are they continue to be set up. And today we had reversals, and many of them, meaning that we gapped down probably on the oil news. You know, there was probably some oil uh, news. The market gapped down a lot of airlines. I don't even know if there was a, a downgrade on the airlines. I could check, but the fact is, all the airlines um, gapped down and recovered very strong. This, these left very good candles. In some cases, you had engulfing patterns. In this case, you just had a nice piercing pattern back up, back over, closed at the highs after the, so this wants to go higher. I'm in the LUV, that was one of our best bets for the week. It also has a textbook wedge pattern, which I love. Um, I would consider this little bounce off the trend line, this little retracement to be something you know that's going to hold up so the stop would probably pretty much go under that that recent uh little area back here that little low back here i'm not even gonna i'll put it in right there but i am along this and considering um a bigger position in it considering a bigger bigger position that's an hps setup that means if you go to the hps site which i'll bring up bring up right now All right, so here is the uh, Southwest Airlines, and you know, in last week's HPS video, I went over a lot of the um, airline stocks. They were all giving us that divergent setup. So this was a, a clear-cut, uh, nice-looking setup here, and you can see we're on our way up to our, our uh, target. I don't think this is going to be an issue at all. I'm actually going to probably add to this tomorrow. I want to probably add to this tomorrow. Just and you know, watch that breakout. Uh, that second, that previous day high, yesterday's high, whichever that was, that was around 49.27. We'll call it 49.30 for a um, continuation. That should bring us right up here to 50 to, 50 to 51. <clears throat> and you get all these setups, all the HPS setups you'll get as a member of Day Trading Radio. Just a little plug there. Uh, just go to daytradingradio.com. Check out the open house we're running this week, and um, just sign up for it. You'll, you'll get something. You'll get a password and um, username back, and everything should be set up fine for you. The stock we took off today, uh, this week was the Service Now, which we activated right here around 177. We let this chop. This was the market drop, and I said, you know what? Let's not trade this. But once it gets back into our buy zone. Then we're going to reactivate it, and once we did it, it ran back up. And I'm expecting this to actually push back up to the highs, so that also looks very good. Another one that we talked about earlier is J.P. Morgan. Now remember, for the stock to be hit, the buy trigger has to be hit first. So like in a lot of these cases, when the market was selling off, we put buy triggers in there, meaning we needed strength to get uh, through those levels. And usually we look for higher highs. In this case, we just pulled back down. Now we're back up here. That's why I like this J.P. Morgan. If you saw it today, I, I picked up a position in J.P. Morgan. <clears throat> a little premature because um, we haven't broken through this yet. But I just um, I wanted to be in it. So I got February calls on it. So it's given me a lot of time. And I, I think we get to our 105 area um, pretty fast, you know, at least before those February calls 
expire. I, I'm, I'm expecting to move through 100, 102, and then we'll just see those calls uh, go up in price, and I'll probably take them off way before that. And there's other uh, other great setups on the HPS. So looking back at the L LUV here, yeah, this is uh, this is textbook stuff here. Textbook wedge pattern, beautiful. Take a look at Delta Airlines. Um, again, Delta had a nice diver or a divergence the other day and then sold off today and closed higher. Could probably expect this whole sector to bounce. This is actually a nice overhead little uh, breakout area there. Right above 48.80. And then that 20 period moving average will come into play at 50.40. So you're talking over a dollar. That's, you know, um, this looks good. And right down the line of the airlines. So we got to that. Now there's um, just going to throw out some high flyers, some more speculative names, uh, a little more risky day trading type of names to put on your list to watch for tomorrow. And just to watch for volume, I actually set set up a new scanner today to let me know when some of these are going to be uh, running early in the day so we could take advantage of them. This is AGE, Ajax Therapeutics. And uh, you just don't know where these things go. The, the momentum traders that get in this, the hype, the low floats, these things could go from 3 to 16 in a day. I've seen stocks that are going from 3 or $30 to 300 in a day. It's just... It's, it's like the Wild West again out there. But you want to be very, very careful on those. I don't recommend trading those because the spreads sometime are 20, 30 points. Um, you have to know what you're doing before you get into the. But something like this, uh, a little bit more liquid. <clears throat> you might want to watch this one uh, tomorrow. And I'll go through the other ones. Um, let's see what else I have here. What is this? Oh, I didn't even read my writing. OFRX. No, that was not it. And you think I'm kidding. Look at this one. Yesterday it went from $29 to $300. I mean, talk about a thousand percent move. Um, and then it came back down to $100. It gapped. It, it was halted. Then it opened up 60 bucks. I mean, it was all over the place. Not uh, not looking to get hurt in these, but this is the type of moves you start to see in some of these. And I have a scanner that kind of brings that uh, brings some of these to my attention early in the morning. So, but a couple of these, like the um, this one right here, the what is this? The PLXP. If we take a look at the dailies on some of these. You know, this one's starting to move aggressively. I don't. Even, I'm not even going to. This one from one to four in about two weeks. I mean, these are tremendous moves. Be careful. All right, here's one EM. Um. This is two dollars and seventy-three cents, and you know you look back at where these things used to trade at. This one traded at one hundred and forty dollars. So this is, uh, you know, these are the kind of ones that really pop. The, the, there's only eight hundred thousand on the float on this, so you know maybe even get you get a hundred shares of this. It cost you a couple hundred dollars. I'll probably end up doing that tomorrow, and you just you know, you see what happens. You know, you never know. I mean, going to forty dollars is a is a home. You're a hero. You're a genius. You know, it goes to four dollars. You're a genius. Um, so a little volume starting to come into this one. A little volume, but something something starting to grow on this one. All right, so EMES, and then I have one more. A E H R. Yeah. Dollar eighty. So I actually have one more after this. This is again another AEHR, uh, recent six dollars. Again, it's um, that's on the weekly chart. Here's the daily chart, and you can see a little pop today. You don't know if this is going to continue tomorrow with the volume, the little volume spike we had today. Very little, but AEHR again, 20 million share float, volume 400,000. It's definitely. Um, Higher, higher than average volume, but not that much. Nothing standing out. It's just the action that got my attention. So that one, I want to throw that one out to, out to you also. And that's it. I want to get this out early enough. Um, again, the bot, a lot of um, lot of interest in the bot. 
the auto trading bot. So right now the longs are pretty much set up. I've been working on this or pretty much around the clock and uh, tweaking it and stuff. So, um, you know, I'm happy to share it here. And we share it to the members of Day Trading Radio during the day. We let that run on an auxiliary channel on your dashboard. So in your lower left-hand corner of your dashboard, you want to go down there, click on the play button, and that bot will show up and it'll, it'll just show up there. So, and you can follow. It has its own audio channel, you'll know. I'm working on getting alerts set up so you get email alerts when you have a trade and eventually have it set up where it activates um, if you have a, a trading station, a trade station, or a ninja trader, um, send out, uh, you know, you could, we could trade using the script and stuff. But that's so down the road, uh, but we're working towards it very quickly. All right, so that's it. Have a great evening. We'll see you tomorrow, Friday. Uh, it's 9 o'clock now, so I want to get this out. Hopefully, I'll see everyone in the morning, Friday. I'm happy to be uh, on the air tomorrow. I don't usually get on on Fridays. So hopefully, I'll be seeing some new people. And if you're out there, a good time to tune in tomorrow and say hi. All right, have a great night, everyone, and I'll see you in the markets.